Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome, welcome, welcome to, oops, let me try again. Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, ooh, it's not going to let me write, and welcome to Big Idea 1.4. We're going to do a little stoichiometry, we're going to do a little purity of mixtures, we're going to do a little purity with mass spec. So get out your calculators, get out your periodic tables, get out your grins, and let's have a time. All right, so. Stoichiometry, converting through a balanced equation. To convert from one type of substance to another, note that the coefficients give you equivalencies. What I mean by that is one pickle five needs four waters. So if I'm trying to convert from one to the other, I'll need four times as much water as pickle five. Um, one pickle five will produce five HCLs. One pickle five will produce one phosphoric acid. Okay? So all of those set up and you put them as ratios. And remember, like uh, 12 and a dozen, you're not really changing the value, you're just changing the units. So let's take a look. Given 15 grams of water, how many grams of pickle five are needed to completely consume the water? So given 15 grams of water, we're gonna start with our given, 15 grams of water, and we're gonna go through moles. Always go through moles, always go through moles, always go through moles. So this will cancel grams, and now I'm in moles of water. The next step, convert into pickle five. So realize we're in moles of water, right? And our goal is grams of pickle five. So I'm trying to go from here to here. So I'm going to get out of moles of water and go into moles of pickle five. Now that, oops, oh, my lines are floating all over. Um, why would I have one mole of PCL5 for four moles of water? One mole of PCL5, that's the coefficient, for four moles of water. That's it. Okay? So now, notice how these units will cancel, and these units already cancel. So the unit I have on top is what I have left is one mole of pickle 5. Then the last thing we're going to do is convert one mole of pickle 5, right? Cancel these. Cancel moles of this with one. One mole of pickle five equals go to the periodic table of pickle five. All right? So pickle five isn't really called pickle five. It's phosphorus pentachloride. But I just really like to say pickle five. 15 divided by 18.02 divided by 4 times 208.22. I get 433 grams of pickle five. I think pickle might be one of my favorite words to say, along with yee-haw. So I'll go with that. So again, what do we do when we're looking at this? Okay, so this is really what I want you to have written down. Those are the same steps over and over again. You start with your given. Do the same thing. Go through moles. Check. This is called a mole ratio. When we convert one thing to another, moles over moles use coefficients. And then whatever unit it asks me for, grams. They could ask you for molecules, and later on they'll ask for liters, but not yet. It'll probably be grams. All right. The purity of mixtures can be determined using percent yield. You'll be given a reactant and an amount of product, which is weird. So usually you're given, like, only reactants or something like that. But you're going to be a reactant and an amount of product. We're going to convert the reactant into that same product they gave you an amount for. <gasps> what the what? We're going to determine the percent yield from that information, and that percent yield is going to be considered the purity. All right, so calcium carbonate is the main component in Indiana limestone, the greatest limestone ever, which was used to build the Washington Monument and many other great buildings. The limestone used was tested for purity by dissolving it in acid and precipitating it with barium nitrate. A 15-gram sample of limestone produced 28.03 grams of barium carbonate. So this is what we thought was limestone, right? And I had 15 grams of this. And I reacted it with excess barium nitrate. And this turned into this, okay? So what happened is this was aqueous. This was aqueous. So it looks like water. This is a solid that I can then um, filter and precipitate out. And this is aqueous. So again, the precipitate is barium carbonate. Um, which is the solid that we're looking at, okay? All right, the purity of the limestone. So we know that we end up with 28.03 grams. That's what we recover, okay? So 
if it was 100% pure, that means when I do this calculation, I'll get 28.03. If it was 50% pure, when I do this calculation, I get half of 28.03, so 14-ish. So let's see what we get. What we should get if it was 100% pure, it's Indiana, so it should be close to pure. 15 grams of calcium carbonate times uh, grams of calcium carbonate, one mole calcium carbonate. Little G means go to the periodic table. Calcium is 40.06. Oh, man, I got to remember. I always forget if it's 06 or 08. I confuse it with both. Uh, calcium is 40.08. Shame on me. Um, plus 12.01 plus 48 is 100.09. And then, boom. Um, and then I have moles of calcium carbonate. And I'm going into moles of barium carbonate. I'm saying, oh, man, uh, I didn't balance this yet. So let's see. One calcium, one calcium. One carbonate, one carbonate. One barium, one barium. Two nitrate, oh, it's balanced. Woo, I got lucky, okay. So then I'm gonna convert this into one mole of barium carbonate into grams of barium carbonate. Barium is 137.33 grams plus 12.01 for carbon plus 48 for three oxygens. I have 197.34. Run this through my calculator and see what I should have got. 15 divided by 100.09 times 197.34. I get 29.57 grams of barium carbonate is what I would have gotten if it was 100% pure. I only got 28.03. So my purity is going to be percent is part 28. 0.03 over total 29.57 times 100% if that floats your boat 20 oops yeah 28.03 divided by second answer is 94.78% okay so what's the period of limestone 94.78% nice Sodium chloride is often packed with rice to prevent the salt from clumping up. To test the purity of the salt-rice mixture, salt is dissolved in water, then analyzed by precipitating the chloride with lead as shown below. Now, I admit I made up this question. I thought, dude, you can just filter the rice out after I wrote this, but I'm rolling with it. We'll pretend that that wasn't true. Um, but here's the reaction that we'll do. And I did this because I want to do some percent composition in it. Um, 2.50 gram uh, package of sodium chloride, including rice, is analyzed and 4.76 grams of lead chloride are recovered. 4.76, maximum was 2.50, okay? And we're in grams for both. How many grams of chlorine are in the precipitate? Okay, so to do that, I need to find my percent chlorine times the total, right? So if it's 50% of 4.76 is chlorine. So to find that, I've got to find Cl2 over PbCl2. That part didn't need to be written down, but go to the periodic table. 70.90 is two chlorines divided by 70.90 oh, plus 207.2. I make sure that's right. For lead, 207.2 is 278.1. So times 100%. And I get, oops. Uh, 70.90 divided by second answer, yep, is 25.49%. All right, so that's the percent. I'm going to know how many grams, so I'm going to do 0. 0.2549 times that total, 4.76. It's going to be my grams of chlorine times 4.76. So I have 1.21 grams of Cl in PbCl2. That's going to equal, that chlorine is going to equal the chlorine in here. Okay? So if that's the case, how many grams of chlorine are NaCl? Same, same. 1.21 grams of chlorine. Okay? 
what is the mass of NaCl in the original package? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my grams of chlorine and turn it into moles of chlorine. And the moles of chlorine are going to equal my moles of NaCl because Cl to NaCl is one to one. Okay? So, and then moles of NaCl, and then I turn that into grams of NaCl. So my grams of chlorine is 1.21 grams of Cl times, I'm going to go to moles of chlorine, uh, 35.45 grams of Cl. Notice I'm Cl, not Cl2, and one mole of Cl. And then this is really one mole of Cl and one mole of NaCl. Does that make sense? How many Cl's are in NaCl? That's one. And then one mole of NaCl into grams. Okay. So again, change my grams into moles. And then moles of NaCl. How many Cl's are in NaCl? One, right? And then um, convert that into grams. So 1.21 divided by 35.45 times 1 divided by 1 times 58.45. Whoa, I got 2,507, which I know isn't right. 1.21 divided by 35.45 times 58.45. And I have 1.995 grams, which I'll change to 2.00 grams of NaCl. And then it says, what is the percent NaCl in the package? So percent is part over total. 2 point, I'll rewrite that, 2.00 over 2.50. And it said the package way up here was 2.50 grams. So 2 over 2.5 times 100 divided by 2.5, and it's 79.8%. Okay? Okay. All right. Mass spec and purity. Remember, mass spec can show parts of molecules. If I have CH4, and I'm going to draw CH4 here, CH, H, 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 okay? If I have CH4, I will see a peak at CH4. Hey, that's all of it, right? That's all together. And I will see CH3. If this breaks off, I'm left with... Dun, 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 dun. And if this one breaks off and this one breaks off, I have CH2. And then if this one breaks off again, I have CH. And then you can see I have a bunch of H's. Okay. You would never see H bonded to H. Why? When I look at this molecule, is there a time when H is bonded to H? No, every H is bonded to C. So H to H will not show up. So that means there will be no two. Okay. So sometimes we add isotopes that will be very small, you know, like the most common carbon is 12. But if we're talking about molecules, you don't see that as much. So let's take a looky, looky, looky. All right. Los Angeles is analyzing its air quality and expects to find NO2, right? So NO2 has a structure like this. So if this is the structure that you expect from NO2, I expect to see O alone. I expect to see ON. So 16 plus 14 is 30. I expect to see ONO, which is 46. I don't expect to see O to O. Make sense? All right. Some cli climate scientists think that ozone may be prevalent as well. The following data, oops, previous data has been collected. Ah. Oh, oh, where did it go? Okay. So um, my questions have disappeared a bit. So um, ozone is O3. Is there evidence of ozone? Okay. Ozone is O3. O3 is 3 times 16, which is 48. Is 48 reasonable from my NO2, a source of smog? Not really, especially not that big, okay? Yes, ozone 
is detected. Okay. Um, how do we know? NO2 is not N to O to O. That's the other question that I had typed that disappeared. Get rid of this floating E. Okay. So if it's N to O to O, I would see this right here, which would be 30. Uh-oh, I see that. And I would also see O to O, which would be 32. 32 doesn't show up. How do we know NO2 is not N to O to O? No peak appears. At 32. Okay. So that tells us it's a way of analyzing what's in the system. And that is pretty much it. So I'll say this to you. Yeehaw! I told you my favorite word. And pickle. And another great word, which is toodles. So long, everybody.